Hey there, and welcome to Idle Weekly. Today's game is called Wrecker Heroes 2, and this time it's in the update 0.13, and it's revision 501. So, Wrecker Heroes 2's uh, Transcendence update is now live. And there are a few changes compared to uh, what it was in the experimental version that I uh, showcased a long time ago. Uh, but let's go over some of the stuff that is in this update in general. Then you will probably al already notice the changes as they go. Anyway. First of all, there is a new item in the game that you can buy every 24 hours in the ruby shop. It's an Empyrean moat. In the experimental version, it had a cooldown of 14 days, but they decided to change the transcendence system, so now it is every 24 hours. It will appear here, usually in the very first row. And uh, because it tends to share cooldown, depending on how often you log in, it might uh, share cooldowns with your with your uh, ancient shards. So just keep that in mind that you might have to wait uh, for your shop to reset again to get the ancient shard. I have currently, as you can see, my next one has a cooldown of 21 because I logged in earlier today uh, to get this. But yeah, the Empyrean mode has priority so it will always come first and then Astral Shard comes second and any other things like the Automator Stone or Automator Point and the a Terrell item will come after them. For me, uh, the Terrell item was third at the moment, and probably the next one will be uh, an automator point. Not that I really need those anymore. In this transcendence, anyway. Uh, but uh, this is. So, oops. This is the new star system map or craft. And uh, it is a little weird. I'm not sure if I can find these, but sometimes uh, the, the icons are kinda bugged in the sense that, uh, as you know, modded, modded uh, these used to only show up as uh, the cave icon. And now the modded, uh, the modded worlds show up as grass worlds instead, but I definitely have it uh, somewhere. I want to show you. I don't know what uh, causes the bug because I checked and I have definitely not uh, overwritten. Like this here. This is the regular vanilla K world. But for some reason it shows up as the grass world icon and I have no idea why. So far I have only seen it with the cave world. Uh, the desert worlds and the jungle and grass world have always had their proper icons. But the cave world is occasionally, and uh, of course this as well, random cave 6. A modded cave world uh, gets a cave icon out of the blue, and the regular cave world gets a grass world icon. But then here is a regular cave world with the cave world icon. Not sure what is going on there. Maybe they are testing uh, something with the world icon code or something, I don't know. Anyway, the main feature of this update. First of all, you have the ascent function. What the ascent does is, uh, as you can see here, ascending will consume a starfire and all of your world crumbs. To give you a damage bonus based on the number of world crumbs consumed, your skill tree will be reset. So first of all, uh, the starfires you gain when you beat the last world 
of a star system. For C that is world 30 and for wizard that is world 50. At the world crumbs you get for every world you beat. So for example this current world is worth 830,000 world crumbs. And uh, each world crumb is worth 10% to your damage boost when you use them up or eat them. So this would give me 73 million percent bonus. And uh, your skill tree will start from the beginning, but stuff like this, like the bonus gold chance by 1.06% or haste by 8.47% or crit damage by 4.99%, these bonuses stay. So while you have to get them again, uh, when you got them previously, then they stay here. Then they will always stay here. Well, for this transcendence anyway. And of course these bonuses are powerful so they can't stay. They are flammable. Which means when you ascend, then you will lose the bonuses from this. So those you have to get again to get them, their bonuses, but the others stay. Next up is... My automator is finished so I'm just taking whatever stones I don't have yet or gems. The transcendence feature... The way it currently works is that you can gain a certain amount of Empyrean modes. As I, not as I said, said earlier, Empyrean modes are uh, on a 24 hour cooldown. And there is a certain amount that you can get that uh, gives you a multiplier. So as you can see for me, a transcension level 0 uh, means that my Empyrean mode cap is 10. So you can see Pending Hero Souls 10, Pending Hero Souls times modes up to cap, so up to 10, is uh, 105 Hero Souls for the next transcension. It basically multiplies uh, 10 by 10 and gets 100. Thing is that Hero Souls have... Uh, uh, let me show you. For example, this uh, world is worth 0 0.1. So they, I actually have 10.5, I think, Hero Souls pending at the moment. And that's why it uh, multiplies to 105. Unfortunately, or, or I think I know how it uh, works, is that when you transcend, then it will take away the amount uh, that the cap says, a worth of Empyrean souls. So I have 16, my cap is actually 10. That means uh, if I transcend now, I will lose 10 Empyrean modes and I will keep 6. At least I think that's how it works. And uh, every time uh, my transcension level goes up, goes up by one every time I transcend, and that increases the Empyrean mode's cap by one. The cap's formula is something like uh, a 10 plus transcension level. So, zero is 10, uh, level one is 11, level 10 is 20, I think, yeah. And uh, level 10 will take a really long time to get to, but that's fine. This is built as a long-term game, so any levels you can gain are supposed to be gained over a certain period of time, or a longer period of time. And I personally really like this update actually. I know it is more linear and therefore there is no instant gratification anymore in the progress, in the progress that the previous design had, but I think uh, that in this version each transcension will give me that satisfaction of sorts, I think anyway. And these are the different bonuses, 
there are a lot of bonuses, basically every single uh, node in the game. And of course there are these bonuses like uh, the Hand of Libertas, grants the Hand of Libertas skill, which as far as I know, um, modifies No, that is actually a new skill, but I can't remember what it was. Then Downpour greatly increases the power of Greg Torrent, which I think uh, meant that Greg Torrent also... What was it? I think it was like uh, Greg Torrent is also affected by uh, other attack damage? Not sure. Or something like that. And the uh, kinetic energy is a nice one. Causes all the attacks to grow in power with Curse of the Juggernaut. Basically, there is a multiplier your auto attacks get based on the amount of uh, curse stacks you have. Or something like that. I can't remember what the bonuses were. Because I'm kinda trying to keep them. Uh, a surprise, I guess. This is a really powerful one. Makes clickable scale with the treasure chest stats. Treasure chests are of course the most powerful of your gold bonuses. So, and clickables are already pretty powerful. So this will help a lot if you're an active player. Transforms gold and clicks to make you wealthy beyond your wildest dreams. Terms and conditions apply. Yeah. This one... Clicks... Bubbles for you. The gold bubbles for you. Which is... Which could be fun. And then there is this automatic automation. Start each transcension with one full copy of the automated tree. This is a nice one. It is expensive, but it is a nice one. And it will help you. Basically, currently the way Transcension works is that you lose your Automator, as well as everything else. Your Ascension stats, your skill stats, stats all this is reset. Uh, so, uh, so fortunately, this game doesn't have the thing where it uh, becomes just a one-shot mania where it just one shot to the max level and then reset and then one shot to the max level again. You will eventually, the each uh, transcension will make earlier was easier, just not by that much. Uh, what, the way it make, makes them easier is as you can see, it says that they got four ancient shards on star, star system one, three here, five here, don't ask why. <laughs> Two here, and then three here. Basically, these are permanent. So when I transcend, then my star system number one starts with a multiplier from four ancient shards, and this from three, etc. That means, and you can keep buying them more and more if you are in this system, in this star system, long enough. So. Eventually these earlier star systems will become so trivial that you will just race through them. But I think that's the point. By the time you are able to race through the first three star systems you should be already in star system 20 or 15 or something like that. So that's the whole point. Uh, they want you to get there faster, just not uh, devolve the game into a one-shot mania like some of the simpler incremental games tend to be. This tries to be a linear action RPG after all, not just another number simulator, if that makes sense. But it almost became one, because people really didn't like, only like six people, liked the previous design. I was one of them. 
I really enjoyed the previous design because you had to adapt to the game in the sense that you got the world traits that were random and you got the, those ethereal items that were also random so you had to adapt and build your builds based on both of those factors and that was a nice challenge that is gone now, now the game is purely linear but I think they have made a good job in the sense that it isn't boring linear, it is actually a nice in the made linear experience now. Improved ascension. I probably won't be putting a lot of points in this one. I just want to start you when when I ascend you start with these four and this. I would just like to start with this, this, this and this as well. So I would probably put one, two, three and four points into improved ascension. Of course later on you should put more into the, these because in harder worlds it would be nice to start with a full build already but that is a far far future and I won't need that anytime soon so for... I, I can't remember how many hero souls I would need for 4 points but I guess I will see Mostly uh, with this uh, design, in this design I have started enjoying the gold builds. So I have gone uh, with golden clicks a lot, lots and lots of gold. And I will probably also go with gold received. Monster, no, monster gold maybe not at first. Actually, yeah, monster gold is better at first. See automated point. Nice. Not that I need it, but yeah. This is my current automator. I have three sets. The second set is basically when the when Golden Rex is active. The first set is um, just for the beginning of an ascension when I don't have a build yet. The first set, all it does is it um, uses Click Storm. And then uh, when I run out, when I run, run out of energy here, so Golden Click stops, I go back to the first one. But when Golden Click uh, manages to last 10 minutes, I go to the third set. And the third set is the so-called uh, energy train set. I'll just show it. This is the main set. So I have the huge click, big clicks. Multi-click, upgrade all items, buy random catalog item, upgrade newest item, mana crit, energize with the 40% energy. Golden clicks at 90% energy, then reload at 40% mana. Boss encounter, power surge, and then cola clicks uh, when it is active. And uh, then uh, on top of here, there's the click storm at 90%. The second one is very similar to this one, but I have put the multi click on a much longer cooldown, as you can see, 8 seconds versus 40 seconds. Then these are the same, and uh, yeah. This one uses mana crit uh, at 10 minutes cooldown and this uses mana crit whenever power surge is active because power surge last, don't, doesn't last all that long it usually means that it only works once at the moment but maybe in late game it can work more than once and then this is the energy drain set here I use uh, multi click on a 10 second cooldown and then Golden Rix, uh, if it's done, then it goes back to the first one. And it uses uh, Metal Detector when I have more than 90% mana. And it uses uh, a rune, because runes are more expensive and runes are damage based. Or haste, but mostly damage. Those damage and haste runes 
other ones that it will buy if I have mana less than 10% left. But this again, um, as you probably know this, no energize here. That's because the purpose of this set is to purposefully decrease the... It's purposefully draining my energy to zero so that the golden flex ends. It's on purpose there because it isn't always good to have a storm active at all times. Sometimes you want a break from that. I have noticed. Especially if you're going really fast. Then it's better to not use storm. That's one of the reasons I'm also using limited haste. Which is a new note. There are some of the notes. Some of the nodes have also changed. Limited haste triples your damage at the cost of half of your haste, so you lose half of your haste, but it does you do 300% damage instead of your normal 100%. Or sorry, instead of your normal 0%, so it's at plus 300%. I think. But then uh, Charitos enchantment has been changed. A critical hits from auto attacks restore one mana. That has always been there, but it also gives you 3 energy now, and its internal cooldown of 1 second was removed. And then of course Synchrony. Skills do not interrupt the auto attacks, that's the same as before, but now also auto attacks generate 2 extra energy when auto attack storm is active. So it actually gives your auto attack storm something, and of course your auto attack storm gives you extra energy when you at when your auto attack storm's attack uh, goes off every time and uh, the auto attack damage is doubled such a nice build nice thing to use if you want to use auto attack storm and the other nodes i think are the same as they always have been. But now each of the storms replaces other storms, so you can't have multiple at all. As far as I have read. As far as I read. And that's pretty much the state of this game right now. I really enjoy it. Maybe not as much as I did the previous design, but I still enjoy it. And I hope that uh, whatever they add in the future will be will make it even better. So if you, if I miss something, then you can let me know. You can ask uh, me anything. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.